Hey everyone, YouTube subscribers, Facebook friends, general guitar enthusiasts, people who are just wanting to check out a video um, that comes up on their uh, screen. And um, this is Andy's free guitar chart videos. I've been charting guitar for about two years now. I've been playing, you know, for decades, but um, off and on. Um, I've never really played professionally um, or piano. I was uh, an electrical engineering major and I never worked in that more than three years so um, I find the time to do this uh, guitar stuff and the sound you're hearing is my dog scratching. Um, she just likes to do that so anyway um, I thought this chart was popular. It got like about 500 views when uh, when I was just looking at the number of views, and uh, I thought, wow, that chart got 500 views. Um, so let's see what this chart is. It's like chart 94 or something like that. Um, try to undock it for a minute. Chart 90, C minor and G minor shapes and arpeggios in modal scale tones. What do I mean? Well, everybody knows what C minor and G minor is. And everybody, well, shapes doesn't sound that complicated. You know, if, but the difference is in the piano, if I do, that is exactly just this, as if my hand was just stuck in this position. That, 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 there'd be no change to it at all. That's the way the piano is set up. It does all that for you. Um, and I'm sure th something like the harp, you know what a harp is. Um, you know, you would still have the same hand um, shapes, maybe maybe not maybe not but if it's in all you know the, the the harp has so many many strings that I'm sure they're patterned out I'll look into it I'll look into it so C minor and G minor seem to be the uh, minors that, that gave me trouble uh, not not that they were trouble there's nothing I just never even knew they existed so what are we talking about? What is this chart talking about? All right, we better take a quick look at this. Okay, it doesn't want to... Okay, I can get it over here. Where you put the cursor on earphone views, where, where it will uh, zoom into. That's, that's a good thing about uh, earphone view, but it's not a good thing to forget these little attributes because then, you know, the last few uh, lessons, I couldn't do that. And it was stuck over here, and I was didn't know what we were doing. Nasty. Um, so the major and the minor here, these are, these are patterns as opposed to actual chords, actual arpeggios. That means that if this was an actual fretboard, there'd be six strings, right? But this would have to be warped over. No doubt about it. This would have to be warped over if this was an actual fretboard. Okay? It would have to be over where the Andy is. It would have to be like that. I can't seem to straighten that one out because I can't get over there. So, that would be the guitar. Now, why do we move this over to here? Because when you're tuning a guitar, it goes in fourth. So, it goes... So, let's say starting from that two down there, I can reach that on my guitar as a baritone guitar, right? That's all. 
nothing fancy, nothing up my sleeve. It's just it's just been down tuned. And then I put the grid on there so I could see where those notes are. But I would need the grid if it was regular tune too. So let's look at that two. That purple two right there. Okay, and then up to the four. So in the key of C, the two would be D, the D minor. Up to the four, which would be F. Up to the six, which would be A. So right there. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, so that is an that's a, that's a, that's an unwarped pattern right there. But what happens when you go up between strings four and five here? On my my convention is that the lowest string would be would be string one. Okay, it, my convention is like a building, a six-story building. So you would have the first floor would be string one and the sixth floor would be string six this six is just the sixth scale degree so that that's not the string number there are no string numbers on this so it says unwarped but now guess what it's warped because we warped it. So the bottom four, four strings or four floors are unwarped. Then we go between floor number four and five and we had to warp it over one. Why? Because when we're tuning a guitar, okay, This interval between the, the fourth and the fifth string, you know, you hear that suspended? That's a fourth. If it was all fourth tunings, it would be. Sounds like that Star Trek, you know. That's why they call it the warp, you know. I can't play, I don't want to mess it up, but I can sing it. So, that was my problem with music. If I could see sing something, I, I still can't just play it. You know, and, and I've watched videos on that, and it's like, Okay, well, just do the do re mi in your head to get to that interval and everything. I, 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 I tried it, you know, but um, I have ways to do that. If I, if I actually, um, you know, you want to see where where are there three fourths in a row like that. That would be from the second to the fifth to the root is three fourths in a row. Also from the third to the sixth to the second is three fourths in a row. Okay. From the fifth to the root to the fourth is three fourths in a row. So that you're not leaving the key there. You know, there's plenty of opportunity to play that song if you want to uh, get into it, if we want to get into it, you know. And that's what people are doing when they write songs, especially folk songs, older songs, and they're real good at the, you know, at the rhythm and stuff, is they're, they're just playing these scales. You know, and you, then it's easier. Then it's easier because it has to be one thing or another. You you can determine it by it has to be within that scale, within that little scale they're playing. And then you can kind of sense whether it's going to be a whole step or, or a major third. All right, so 
let's